Good morning, Springhurst. Now, today is a really exciting day, and we're here to actually celebrate you, your friends and classmates who ran for student government. That's really a big deal. So let's give everyone who ran for student government a nice round of applause. I'm so proud of all of you. I know that it takes, I know that it takes a lot of courage to do that. And I know that many of you worked really hard on your posters and your speeches, and that means a lot to me because I know that you care so much about our school and you really want to help us be our best, and you care about your classmates, and that means a lot to me, especially being here at Springhurst with all of you. Student government has been here for now 15 years. That's longer than any of you have been alive. So that's pretty exciting. And we have fifth graders who were fourth graders last year that might have participated. Now they're fifth graders and participating. And now our fourth graders, we're welcoming them to student government. And third graders, we invited you because we want you to see what you could do next year as part of student government. We have some special guests today also, so it's gonna be a really nice treat. But remember, even if you weren't elected, I'm super proud of you for running and for putting forth some effort, and you can always help make Springhurst a better place, no matter if you're elected to student government or not. Thumbs up if you understand what I said. All right, awesome. So now I get to introduce you to a really wonderful person. She's a fifth grade teacher. Some of you have her now. Some of you might be lucky enough to have her when you're in fifth grade. Mrs. Mizra, thank you. all the fourth and fifth grade students who wanted to take part in our school student government. And we're going to ask the elected students to take an oath. Does anybody know what an oath is? What's an oath? An oath is when you make a promise to do something or to not yet. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's exactly correct. An oath is a promise. How many of you have ever made a promise about something? Okay, terrific. Uh, so today we're going to ask our elected students to take an oath or a promise to do a good job as role models and leaders of our school. In a few weeks from now, on Tuesday, November 8th, adults aged 18 and over across our entire country are going to exercise their rights as citizens of the United States of America. They're going to go to the polls and they're going to vote on certain issues and for various school officials, uh, uh, various officials to represent them in our local, state, and national government. Our very own state of New York will be voting for a new governor. And voting is one of our responsibilities as good citizens. And we have many factors to consider when we vote in making our decisions. So fourth and fifth graders, over the past several weeks, you've listened to your classmates' speeches, you've seen their posters hanging in your classroom, and you too had a lot to consider as you decided on who to vote for it, for student government to be your representatives last week in our election. For example, you had to think about whether the candidate is a good leader, whether the candidate is a hard worker and one who helps others, are they responsible? Whether the candidate is respectful to their classmates and adults, whether they're a good listener and communicator, whether they demonstrate our Springhurst positive behavior qualities, and whether the candidate is the best choice for your class representative, because there are many people who were excellent choices, but you had to decide on the best choice. So, well, just as you considered who to vote here for at Springhurst, the American people are going to make their decisions on who to vote for in our elections on November 8th. Um, so they will also take an oath 
when they get elected to office. So um, across our country, um, this is going to be going on throughout our different states and our national government. So I'd like to give this back to uh, Principal Drake, and she's going to talk to you about what good leaders are all about. Thanks so much, Mrs. Mizra. Right. I also want to say thank you for showing some school spirit today. It's blue and white day, and you all look wonderful. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about what it means to be a leader and what it means to be a good leader. So what is, what is a leader? Anybody have any ideas? Yes. A leader is someone who leads a group of people and makes good choices. Wonderful. Yes. What else? I like Jesus. Oh, all right. Yeah. And anybody can you name any leaders that you see every day at Springhurst? They're leading you? Yeah, very nice. Jacqueline. Staff members? Yeah, yes. You. Ha, thanks. I try, yes. <laughs> right, so my job is to be the leader of Springhurst, and I work really hard to try to be the very best leader I can. A good leader is someone who really cares about people who they are leading, right, and wants the very best for them, and wants to help everybody do better and be better and feel good while they're doing it, right? That's what a good leader does. A good leader also works with other leaders and other people to help make the world a better place. I have a colleague and a friend here who's a leader of the middle school. Our middle school principal is here, Mr. Mussolini. <laughs> Mr. Mussolini is also a really good leader. So he leads all of the teachers at the middle school and cares very much about the middle school students. And like me, Mr. Mussolini works with the Board of Education and parents and people in the community and the PTSA to help make the middle school and the school district a better place. So let's give a nice round of applause to Principal Mussolini. Thank you very much, Dr. Drake. Good morning, boys and girls. How is everyone today? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You've been great listeners. I'm going to ask you to just be a great listener for a little bit longer. I promise I'll try not to bore you. So, that uh, was a wonderful introduction I just got. I am a leader, and I'm very proud to be a leader of a really important place, Dobbsbury Middle School. And the great part about Dobbsbury Middle School is I'm like right in the middle. I get to see everyone as they're growing up and coming past me. And because the middle school is attached to the high school, I get to see them growing into high school. And at the very end, I attend all the high school graduations, and I get to watch everyone leave and go off to, and go off to their next venture in life, which is really cool. And as a leader, we have a very important responsibilities. And I think as a middle school principal, one of the most important responsibilities I have is to make sure that I'm doing the best job I can preparing all our students for the next level of, of their education. And what's their next level of education? What comes after middle school? Uh, comes high school, is right. Why don't you hold that question? Well, let's, let's all be sure of that. What comes after middle school? High school. Absolutely, for all of it. After high school, it could be college, it could be a career. There's a lot of things after high school, but my job is preparing everyone for high school. No way I need the listeners, though. That's awesome. So when I was asked the question was, did I, ever, did I ever have any leadership positions before? And that made me think back. And one of the, I think I've had several. In fact, I remember being running for student government myself when I was in high school, when I was a senator in high school, which I thought was a big deal. But after that, I had a position, I was a lifeguard. Does anyone know Saxon Woods Pool, or Sprain Pool, or Tibbetts Brook Pool? They sound familiar to you? So, wait, okay. So I was, a, I was a lifeguard at Spring. That's where I started. Now being a lifeguard is kind of leader in of itself, but after one year, I was asked to be promoted, and then I became in charge of all of the lifeguards at Spring. If everyone remember Spring, Spring Brook Pool is like a football field. It's so big, the pool. We had 15 or 20 lifeguards a day that, we were, that I was responsible for. And so my first real sense of leadership at that, at that point in my life 
was being responsible for all those lifeguards to making sure that they were doing their job appropriately. And what's the job of a lifeguard? What do they do? What do they do? Tell me. They keep people safe when they're in the pool. So that's a, a lifeguard position itself was really important and it was my job to be responsible for them to make sure that they did their jobs. So that was really my first lesson in leadership. Wait, hold your questions for a second. Thank you. So now you have representatives that you guys voted for that represent you. And here's a really special part about being a leader. Because when you're a leader, it's really not about you anymore. It's about who you represent. That's one of the most important parts of leaders, and it's really hard to do that. Because sometimes you might think something yourself, but all of the people you represent, all those people who voted for you and for you guys, you have your classmates vote for you. And that's like the biggest compliment ever to have a your peer vote for you. So if your peers voted for you to represent them, that's huge. So I'm going to make some little scenario up. Maybe I don't like chocolate milk. That would be insane, right? Everyone has trouble. Wait, 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 because what is my job? I represent all the people who voted for me. And if you all want chocolate milk, then I have to say, well, while I don't like chocolate milk here in the cafeteria, and I choose not to drink chocolate milk, I'll probably drink regular milk. My constituents, my peers, the people who voted for me and trusted me, say we need chocolate milk in the cafeteria. And I'm gonna vote for chocolate milk. And that's one of the most important jobs. And sometimes you, oh, you always have to recognize that you, and who are student government people, raise your hand, who were voted, who ran? That's awesome. Uh, let's get a round of applause for the ran. Okay, hands down. Okay, two claps to hear me. Good. So yes. So for me to tell you, I'm very proud of all of you for running to stand up, and, and I know you prepared speeches and you had platforms that you presented, and to put yourselves out there in front of peers. It's not an easy thing to do. For all of you who are willing to represent your constituents. Are you representing your peers, even though you might not always feel the same way? You have a little chocolate milk analogy we used? It's a really special thing that you're doing and very, very important. So I compliment you all. I want to congratulate you all for doing what you do. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. And oh, by the way, one more time. I, my name is Mr. Mussolini. I'm the middle school principal, but everybody calls me Mr. Moose. Is that okay? You guys are okay that? Good. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm very, very proud of all of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. Hold on, I would love to answer all of your questions, but we can't answer questions just yet. We have something very important to do, and that is to recognize our student government members. So we're going to turn it over back over to Ms. Mizrak in just a moment. But she spoke to you a little bit about, a little bit about elected officials and make a difference in our village and our county and our state and beyond. These students who she's going to recognize now are going to make a big difference right here at Springhurst Elementary School. So thank you, Ms. Ms. Rob. Thank you. All right, so before I recognize um, our wonderful students and staff who participated in our election process, I'd like to recognize another special leader. We have a guest here today, Mrs. Ellen Borenstein. Would you stand, please? know Mrs. Borenstein. I know the students won't know her, but she was a teacher here several years ago, and she made a huge difference here at Springhurst. And I'm going to tell you why. Mrs. Borenstein was actually one of the two founders of Springhurst Student Government, along with Mrs. Young, uh, who's not here anymore either, she's retired. Uh, they created student government here at Springhurst, um, in 2007, I think it was. Um, anyway, well, we have her to thank for all the thought and the work that went into creating this wonderful club at our school, and it's so nice to have you back here to join us. Thank you for coming today.
right, so I also want to thank all the students who participated in our campaign process. There were 75 fourth and fifth graders who ran in the election. Would you please stand if you ran in the election? Uh, that I'll be providing to your teachers. Have a seat, please. Okay. Um, and I wanted to let you know that even though, as, as Principal Drake said before, even if you weren't elected, your voice matters. We want to hear your ideas. Your student government reps want to hear your ideas. Um, and again, I want to let you know that in middle school and in high school, they also have student government. So you're welcome to participate when you get to those levels as well. I'd also like to recognize those students um, who actually voted. How many students voted? Raise your hand. All fourth and fifth graders exercised their right to vote. And that was excellent. Um, thank you for your participation. And thank you to our fourth and fifth grade teachers who always help me out with the student government election each year. Uh, really appreciate all of your efforts. So student government involves us all, not just those who were selected, um, but all of us together. Their job, as Mr. Mussolini said to you, is to get information from you and share information with you, and your job is to represent their thoughts. So it's a joint effort. And thanks to all, um, uh, to Assistant Principal Grabowski, and to Dr. Drake for all their support as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Principal Drake and um, Mr. Mussolini to do the swearing in assembly. Uh, oh, thank you so much. All right, I'm going to wheel this over without knocking it down. Thanks. All right, well, the following students come to the front here. We're going to ask you to stand right here on the steps. Please hold your applause until I finish the names for each grade, okay? It's going to be really hard because we love all of these kiddos, all right? But hold your applause. I'll tell you when you can clap. So let's start with fourth grade representatives. Esme Barden, come on down. Not here. Not here. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to thank Esme in our minds, right? Okay. Okay, Alexandra Nigro, come on down. Okay. Charlize Nunez, Maxwell Popson, Lena Frisch, Arthur Nunez, Jack Lai, Fiona Watnick, Viviana Galuzzo, Bayasa Brass, Jude Zanana, and Tara Joshua. Now you may applaud our fourth grade students. Thank you. 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 Thank Representatives, when you come up, I'd like you to stand on the top step, okay? Here we go. Remember, hold your applause until the end. Aaron Saletti. Gianna Harris. Nina Wengbo. Anya Sony. Oh, yes, sorry. Yep. Elise Corbett. Xavier Nunez. Jane O'Day. Erin Saini. Yeah. All right, listen, please. It's disrespectful, right, to applaud for some and not all. So we're waiting to the end to applaud our wonderful friends. Forget where I left off. Erin Saini, yep. Yeah. Ethan Bonilla Zarilla. And Sophie Pitts. When Sophie arrives to the stage, we can give our fifth grade student government representatives a wonderful round of applause. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. I am so, so excited 
to have the chance to work with all of you. You are wonderful students who I'm really, really looking forward to having in student government this year. Are you ready for your own? Okay, so Principal Mussolini is going to read some words. He's going to pause and you'll repeat what he says. And this is the promise that you're making to all of Springhurst as our student government representatives. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I see ready faces. Here we go. We, the students of Springhurst School Student Government, will act together as responsible elected representatives in order to promote the general welfare of our student body and community and to provide opportunities for student cooperation and participation in school activities. Congratulations, you've done a wonderful job. Good luck this school year. One moment. Uh, our first meetings are going to be in the first uh, and second week of November, and uh, we have a lot of great things to tackle this year and good ideas. Uh, your class representatives are going to report back to you and share um, the events of our meetings, and they're going to come to you to get your ideas. So your voice matters. We want to hear from you guys. Um, we look forward to uh, continuing to make Springhurst an even better place than it already is, and we thank you for joining us for this wonderful assembly today. 